Hi guys, Jeff Westfall here. Uh, this is your second lesson on sideward ukemi, break fall technique, specifically to the side with rotation on the long axis. <clears throat> so we last time we looked at the basic structure and the coordination of the slap and the feet on the ground. Now we want to start coming from more realistic platforms to get there. So first we're going to start in our four foot squat on the ball of my feet, just as we did in the rearward ukemi videos. And what I want to do at first in this structure, this, this will cause some of you some trouble learning how to do this. I want to, uh, I want to have a line, an imaginary line, or I can put a piece of duct tape on the mat. Um, I've got this line here, and what I'm going to do is put my arm, let's make the line go this way for a moment. I'm going to put my left hand on my belly. It's already prepared for when I fall. My left hand, my right hand goes out like this. Now, I'm going to step my right foot along this line that I'm standing on, and that'll make me turn my side to you. Watch at the same time how I bring my right arm around to my left ear. Then, I fall to the position. But for right now, let's simplify that, and let's just do this. Since we're down in a squat, um, we don't need to slap as much. We'll add that in in a minute. But what I do want to do from here, I'll just put my hand here, is I want to take my step and drop to my structure. Now, I did a while ago the formal Kodokan Judo way of doing it. I crossed my feet as I, as I hit. This is a good way to absorb some impact. It's not as real in so far as using my leg is concerned. Both methods are good. So I can fall and be this way. I can fall and be this way. As a matter of fact, from here, I can simply take my leg out and just kick it and fall to my position. I don't normally, when I come from a squat or standing, try hard to slap with these. Instead, I position them. The force of the fall, when I really take a throw, will make them come down. So I don't have to try to make them come down. Instead, I prefer to keep my core curled. So again, our first task is just to familiarize ourselves with landing in structure this way, landing in a good structure, feeling comfortable with our position. Then we learn to coordinate a good slap and a good step. So as I showed you earlier, I rotate to face that direction, listen to my wristwatch as I say it, as I call it, and drop. Now, once that becomes comfortable for you, we're going to take it standing. So again, hand on the belt, other hand out. I take a step. This is actually easier than from the squat. Standing is more intuitive than squatting. But now I lower. And as I hit the ground, or as I get close to the ground, I bring the legs up in one version, crossed. That's a more traditional version. In another version, I splay the legs apart. This is good practice because it's creating two moment arms that slow down your rotation this way. So learning to create this kick as you're falling can be really useful. When you're taking falls, and it seems that every time you try to slap, you slap and you end up kind of face down like this, the biggest culprit is that you aren't taking this right leg and kicking it up towards your head to help reduce your rotation. So there's a place for both of those variations. Now, finally, we're going to do, we went from standing, now we'll do a drop from standing. What I mean by, uh, by a drop from standing is after I've stepped over here, I'm going to take a little, I'm going to literally, instead of lowering myself slowly, I'm going to drop. That's a little trickier to pull off, it takes more experience. So here we have three levels of intensity of this technique and this concept. Now there's still much more to go with this, but I think this makes a nice little series for you to work on to grow more comfortable with this particular angle of falling. Take care, wash your hands, stay healthy and safe, and I'll see you next time.